everyone. Happy November. You know what that means. New month, new CHT prep for the CHT exam. Um, Congratulations to those of you who have just finished your CHT exam. That is amazing. For those of you who are thinking about studying for the May 2025 exam, this CHT prep practice questions is for you. If you haven't been here before, here is how it's going to work. We're going to go through 15 practice questions that are essentially what you would find on the CHT exam. Uh, We'll take a pause. You can pause the video anytime, go back, look at your answers, make sure that you commit to an answer for every question, and then we'll go back through each question and the correct answer and a brief rationale for each. So without further ado, let's get into it. One. Which of the following procedures would be indicated for STT joint arthritis, scapholunate instability, and avascular necrosis of the lunate? A. Suave Kapanji B. STT fusion C. Derek procedure D. Hemiresection interposition Question 2. Which of the following is true of Landsmere's ligament? A. It extends the MCP and IP joints. B. It originates from the PIP volar plate and inserts on the terminal tendon. C. It is also known as the triangular retinacular ligament. And D. It allows the lumbricals to assist in MCP flexion. 3. Which cervical dermatome is represented in the thumb? A. C5 B. C6 C, C7, D, C8. 4. Which of the following is true of the Duchenne sign? A. A high level of injury will result in increased claw deformity. B. Claw deformity occurs due to the unchecked pull of the extrinsic extensors. C. Digits 2 through 4 will demonstrate a claw deformity. Or D, weakness of the lumbricals and interossei is present. In five, which of the following assessment tools would be most relevant to test stereognosis in evaluating sensory nerve return? A, wrinkle test. B, Moberg's pickup test. C, ninhydrin test. D, vibration. Six. After a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty, which movements should be avoided in the first 12 weeks postoperatively? A. Shoulder flexion past neutral. B. Combined extension and internal rotation. C. Shoulder external rotation past 20 degrees. D. Shoulder flexion past 60 degrees. Question 7. Which of the following elements of rehabilitation are appropriate for a patient with a lateral collateral ligament repair? A. Early range of motion needs to be completed in supination to avoid varus stress. B. An orthosis should immobilize the patient for four weeks. C. Elbow range of motion in extension should be limited to 30 degrees initially. Or D dynamic stabilization of the wrist flexor muscle group will provide stability. Question 8. Which of the following is true regarding compartment syndrome after traumatic hand injury? A. Signs are pain with passive stretch, paresthesias, and rapid pulse. B. Normal pressure is 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury. C. There are two compartments in the hand, the thenar and the adductor compartments. D. It is a medical emergency and the patient should go to the emergency room. 9. A patient with carpal tunnel syndrome presents to the clinic. Upon assessment, the therapist finds a positive response to Berger's test. Which orthosis would likely be recommended? A. Wrist cock-up orthosis in 20 degrees wrist extension. B forearm-based thumb spica orthosis, C, wrist cock-up in slight wrist flexion with MCP block, D, wrist cock-up orthosis in 20 degrees wrist flexion. 10. 
Which of the following is an example of an immediate controlled active mobilization protocol in flexor tendon rehabilitation? A. Modified Duran-Hauser B. Modified Kleinert C. M-A-M-M-T D. Washington Regimen 11. A patient presents to the clinic at two postoperative weeks after a distal radius fracture, open reduction, internal fixation with a volar plate. Which of the following would the therapist instruct the patient in for their home program? A. Edema control techniques with compression and end range passive range of motion of the wrist. B. Wrist cockup orthosis between exercise sessions and active range of motion of the wrist. C. Forearm strengthening with two pound dumbbells. D. Passive range of motion of the wrist and forearm and scar massage. Question 12. Which of the following is true regarding application of electrotherapy modalities? A. Electrical current flows from the anode to the cathode. B. Alternating current is used for interferential current. C. Direct current is a continuous flow of particles in two directions. D. The cathode is the positively charged pole. And 13. Injury to which extensor tendon zone would involve synovial sheaths? A. Zone 2. B. Zone 4. C. Zone 6. D. Zone 8. Question 14. Which intervention would be appropriate for a patient who presents to the clinic three weeks after a central TFCC tear debridement? A. Isotonic exercise up to 10 pounds for the upper arm and forearm. B. Progressive strengthening may be initiated if the patient is pain-free. C. Discontinue the wrist cock-up orthosis if the patient is asymptomatic. D. Prolonged low load passive stretch to the wrist and forearm. Question 15. Disruption of which of the following muscles may contribute to ulnar impingement syndrome? A. Extensor carpi ulnaris. B. Pronator quadratus. C. Pronator teres. D. Flexor carpi radialis. Amazing job, everybody. You made it through all 15 practice questions. If you need a little bit more time, go ahead and pause the video here. Make sure that you feel confident in your answers. Commit to a choice for each question. And let's go back through and go over the answers and rationale for the best possible choice of each question. Question one, the correct answer here or the best possible answer is B, the STT fusion. Um, all three of the other procedures, the Suave Kapanji, the Derrick procedure, and the Hemi resection inner position are indicated for DRUJ arthritis. Um, Suave Kapanji is where they fuse the DRUJ. Um, Derrick is the resection of the distal ulna. And then the hemi resection inner position is the resection of only the articulating portion of the ulna and the inner posing soft tissues to prevent radial ulnar impingement. And two, the correct answer here is B. Um, Landsmere's ligament is also known as the ORL or oblique retinacular ligament. Um, so once you know that fact, you can eliminate, you know, C, the triangular retinacular lig ligament. Um, when you know the purpose of the ORL, we know that it, it doesn't do extension of the MCP and IP joints or lumbrical assistance in MCP flexion. So based on that, um, we know that B is correct. Three correct answer is B. Um, this is something that I frequently have to review all the time in practice because I just have not <laughs> completely memorized all of that information, but I love looking up the cervical uh, dermatomal charts and I use that all the time in my practice. Um, C5 is really corresponding more to the upper part of the arm. C7 is more correlated with the index and middle finger and C8 usually is the small finger. Question four, correct answer here is D. 
uh, first key of this question is knowing what Duchenne's sign is, which is the clawing of the ring and small finger. Um, we know that a lower level of injury will actually result in increased clawing um, as the FTP returns. Uh, claw deformity occurs to unchecked pull of the FTP with no intrinsic power and digits two through four will not claw. Um, it, it will be digits four and five for the ulnar nerve. Question five, most relevant exam here would be B, Moberg's pickup test for stereognosis. Uh, the wrinkle test is to test for nerve denervation. You're putting the hand in water and the area that is not innervated will actually not wrinkle or get pruny. Uh, the ninhydrin test tests for sweat secretions. Um, so again, no sweat will be secreted in the area of nerve denervation. And then vibration would not help assess stereognosis. Question six, correct answer would be B, combined extension and internal rotation. Um, you would also want to avoid motion behind the back, so no extension past neutral, and then any combination of internal rotation with extension. Question seven, correct answer is C. Uh, with the LCL repair, um, we would want to exercise in the safe position of pronation versus supination because that will avoid varus stress and protect the recovering structures. Um, with elbow range of motion, for to limit and immobilize a patient for four weeks, unless for some extenuating circumstances, you're going to get so stiff. Um, because of the bony congruency and the ligaments of the elbow. So as long as this surgeon approves it, it's best to start protected range of motion much earlier than four weeks. Um, and then dynamic stabilization of the wrist extensors will provide stability for the LCL complex. Eight, compartment syndrome. Correct answer here is D. It is a medical emergency. Um, the signs, the symptoms are the four Ps. So pain with passive stretch, paresthesias, which I totally spelled wrong, um, pallor or loss of color, and then pulselessness. Uh, the normal pressure would register 8 to 10 millimeters of mercury, usually compartment syndrome it's like 30, um, and then in the hand there are four compartments. There's the inner osseous, thenar, hypothenar, and adductor. Question 9, correct answer would be C. Uh, the Berger test indicates that with flexion of the fingers of the MCPs, the lumbricals are actually tracking proximally and crowding the carpal tunnel. So we would want to adjust our orthosis design to position the MCP joints in extension so that the lumbrical muscles don't crowd the carpal tunnel and press on the median nerve. Question 10 with flexor tendon protocols. Um, this question, correct answer would be C, the MAMMT, which is, you know, kind of supporting short arc motion and immediate controlled active mobilization or ICAM, um, that, which is what this question is asking for is ICAM protocols. The other three protocols that are listed are considered immediate controlled passive mobilization protocols. So um, you just want to review the difference between all of those different numerous different flexor tendon protocols. 11, correct answer is B. Uh, this patient is ORAF, two weeks post-op, so you'd want to initiate active motion, certainly edema control, scar mobilizations once the scar, uh, sorry, once the sutures are removed and the tensile strength is uh, able to tolerate that. Um, passive range of motion typically begins around four weeks, though depends on the surgeon preference, and then strengthening typically around eight weeks, but again, depends on surgeon preference. And 12, correct answer here is B. Um, this is just a, you know, tr truthful fact. Um, I always have to review electrotherapy mod modalities because I don't use it very often in my clinic, um, but th that would be a good chance to review your PAMs and the electrotherapy in particular. Question 13, which of the following tendon zones involve the synovi synovial sheets? That would be 
zone eight. So go ahead and look back at the anatomy and make sure that you're familiar with all of the extensor tendon zones and the components of each zone. 14, correct answer here uh, would be D, typically uh, with a debridement three weeks post-op. We're wanting to focus on regaining mobility at this stage. Um, they may or may not be continuing with the wrist cock-up orthosis, depending on the surgeon's specific protocols, but usually they're going to continue to wear some sort of wrist cock-up or ulnar gutter uh, or even a sugar tong, depending on the surgery and what the surgeon found um, and then strengthening typically won't begin until at least eight weeks question question 15 uh, correct answer is the pronator quadratus it contributes to ulnar impingement syndrome because it can accentuate in distal ulna instability um, and the, the pronator quadratus normally, the function of it is really to pull the radius and ulna together um, and contraction of the pronator quadratus can actually cause the ulna to impinge on the radius. So there can be some symptoms of even painful snapping sometimes. All right, everyone, that will do it for today's CHT prep for November. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I do have a full playlist of these types of videos, so feel free to go back, uh, leave comments, um, questions. You know, sometimes I don't speak correctly, or maybe an answer that I've come up with is not a, you know, maybe a question is not very great or correctly written, or sometimes I speak incorrectly too so please leave feedback um, or any discrepancies that you are finding and i hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one bye